Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new Unity 3D video and today I'm going to go over a question that had been asked of me uh, regarding the Cinti Asset Pack and how to make a better night scene using the assets from the Sci-Fi City Pack. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you how you can import the asset package and if you've already downloaded that you're just going to have to go into Assets and import package and custom package. And I've already got it selected here, so I'm gonna show you, you'll see this, I've gone to my path where that is. There you'll have a Unity package file, it'll end in .unity package, and you can see the Polygon Sci-Fi Unity package. Uh, so we're gonna open that. And this may take a minute, so I'm gonna pause recording, and I'll come back once it's ready. I forgot to mention you're also going to get this pop-up that says, you know, all the things that are going to come in with the package. You'll just want to leave everything selected by default. So I'm going to click import on that and then we'll let that run through and then it should be done in just a minute. Like I said, it can take a little bit of time for the assets to import. So I let that take place. Um, I'm using Unity 2019.3.5 F1, um, and uh, I did get some errors when I imported it, but I'm going to go ahead and clear those. And my layout is not the default. I'm going to reset that to be default, um, so it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, and you'll see here under the assets, we now have this folder for Polygon Sci-Fi City. And we're going to go to the scene, because they have a demo scene here. And I'm going to double click that to open it up. And we'll take a look to see how we can transform this uh, kind of uh, afternoon looking scene to more of a uh, nighttime scene. Before I get into my video, I want to talk about how I got the lighting for my thumbnail because I realized I didn't really cover how I did that. So I'm going to cover that super, super quick. I'm going to drag the scene back into my uh, the uh, editor here and explain what I did for this thumbnail setup. So um, on all these other effects, you're going to see this once the video gets started. Um, but here on this scene, I've done all the other effects that I've done for the video, rest of the video, but I added some point lights. And all I did was on these point lights, you can see here I've changed their color, I've changed their range, uh, and I've changed their um, their intensity. So this one I actually left at the normal, like 10, 1, 1, but I changed the color to bright green and I brought it into the building. For this second light though, this one in the truck, um, I made it kind of orange because it matches the rest of the truck to match that. Uh, I dropped the range down so it's not going outside of the truck. Changed the intensity to be a lot higher so it's easier to see through that window there. I could drag this down quite a bit, but it helps to make it stick out. Um, and so uh, I also added a point light under that little platform. This is the default setup. So I put a pink, pinkish color light and I left that at the default. And then on this building over here, um, way over here on, on the side, I have a point light that's set to um, a range of 30. So it's really, really massive. I turned the gizmos off, um, but the range itself is just, it's huge. It's really big. So you're capturing everything from the side with that one point light. Um, so the range is 30, about 30. The intensity was lowered a bit uh, from one to about 0.6. Because if you leave it at like, you know, you can make it real high and it looks like there's a fire or something going on. But uh, I'll drag that back down to one, even looks fine. Um, but anyway, that's how I made this thumbnail um, for some of the lighting on this scene uh, for the setup. So um, now we'll get back to the rest of the video. So one of the first things that you'll notice is, regardless of where you're at, if you kind of pull out of the scene a bit, you start to see that everything turns kind of pink. And so that's actually um, a lighting setting that we're gonna have to change to fix that. So what we're gonna do is go into Window, Rendering, Lighting Settings. And you're not really gonna be able to get a good night scene if you have any kind of fog. And that pink fog is set right here. So you're gonna scroll down under Scene, all the way down to the bottom, and we're gonna turn that fog off. You might say, well, I wanna use like black or uh, kind of a gray or maybe a blue to give it an effect you can do that but that kind of also interferes with another thing that we're going to do we're going to add some bloom and if you have a fog that fog is going to kind of suppress the bloom which doesn't look good um, in some night scenes especially for city night scenes so we're just going to turn it off completely um, and you have a skybox material sometimes that skybox material will also 
show up on to your city as well like your your system will kind of generate lighting based on that or the scene will so um but i'm gonna leave that for now because what really matters is this directional light i'm gonna turn that off and you can see here that that right there already makes a big difference so um actually maybe you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and go into uh that window again rendering lighting settings and the skybox i'm actually gonna go ahead and with that i'm gonna set the material like the skybox to none here and you can see right there by doing that, it made the scene even darker. So I'm going to leave it like that. So now you've got kind of like a dusk looking type scene here. Um, and we're going to go one step further. Um, there's a sky box or this uh, kind of a sphere, the sky dome that they've created for us. Um, with that, you can actually enable the moon and the stars. We'll go ahead and do that. And... Um, we will also change the sky dome to right now it has this shader that's a simple sky dome and it, you can tell it looks pretty dark i think it looks okay if you like this but if you don't and you want to just make it real dark uh like the night sky you can go in and find like mis miscellaneous materials um select that sky dome down here um, and i'm going to make it black just completely black now we've really got a dark dark scene but um you probably do want to have some kind of light in here. So let's say we want to take change that a bit and maybe give it like a directional light. We'll go back there and we're going to enable this again. But we are going to change this to be a little less bright. Um, so we're going to change the intensity quite a bit. Drop it down. And we will probably change the direction to match more of more of where it's coming from with in regard to the moon. So it looks like it's more of a moonlight. Um, I think that's okay, but the shadows are going the wrong way. So we are going to rotate this uh, like that. Make the shadows kind of match the moon. And more like that. It kind of looks like it's pointing at the moon. Um, so that way you get a little, like, a little bit of moonlight going on there. Um, and you can bring the intensity up just a little bit, but you don't want to go too high. So I'm going to say maybe 0.2. That's still a little too bright. Maybe 0.1. I will call that good. So you got a little bit of that. So um, one thing that we'll want to do now um, for the night scene is you can see that the signs don't look very bright. Um, like you have bright city lights going on around there. Uh, but something you can do here now is we can add some bloom effects. But we don't have the post-processing effects in here yet. So to get post-processing, we're going to go to Windows, Package Manager, and wait for it to load up. You're gonna see some stuff pop in here. And we're gonna go down to post processing. And we're gonna click on it and say install. And we'll let that install. And this may take a little bit again. So I'm gonna let the video just run and I'll probably cut this part out. Okay, once post-processing has installed, you'll see it here. Um, we're now going to go ahead and add some post-processing effects, and we're going to add some bloom. The first thing we need to do is um, add a post-processing volume. So I'm going to say create an empty game object, and I'm going to call it post-processing. And then we're going to add a component the post process volume. Okay, so now that we've got that post processing volume um, added to our empty game object, it's going to need a profile. Um, if you don't have one created yet, you just have to go over here in 2019 and click new, and they're going to have this post processing profile. Um, and now we're going to add an effect, and we're going to add bloom. So with that, so you can see here now that bloom is part of that profile. Um, we're going to say intensity on the bloom. Um, I'm going to put this to like 0.25. That might be a little too high. Um, and I'm going to leave it right there. That's, a, that's simple enough to get the effect that we want. You might say, well, I don't see any bloom effects now. Nothing's changed yet. And that's because we have one more step. So first we add 
the we have the imports plus processing then we got an empty game object with the volume um, and this is the quick and dirty way of doing it there's a lot more tweaking we can do to this um, but we're going to leave it at that um, we also want to set this to is global um, and then they'll leave that weight at one so uh, now we can go to our camera because on our camera we now have to add a component and we needed to do a post process layer and we're going to add that post process layer and the layer right here we need to change this from nothing to everything and this is going to add post processing to everything and right now um, it's kind of hard to see if we've actually got that going yet so let's say um, we'll jump back into the post processing volume and we'll say intensity is going to go up quite a bit to 25.25 is what I said earlier that was clearly not enough so anyway so now we've got that 0.25 we'll take a look at our game and we'll you know ramp that up a bit and you can already see that we're adding uh, some good looking bloom effects there um, but that is kind of how you would do it so that right there is a good start um let me hide that plane for real quick so we can see more what's going on but you can kind of see we have a little bit of moonlight that pops in we have a lot of bloom here we can uh, change the effectiveness of that bloom how bright it is um and anything with an emissive uh you know emissive uh light source or uh, texture is going to get a bloom effect around it um now one thing that you see here, like it's gonna be hard to tell, but we'll ramp this up a lot and you can see the police car. So it's kind of hard to tell, it's more subtle on some things. Um, and the threshold, you know, if we drop that threshold a bit to like 0.6, it really is gonna add quite a bit of uh, craziness to the whole scene. Um, but, you know, tweak, with, tweak it a little bit to see what you like and kind of get something you want. Um, but if you put that threshold way up, nothing's gonna get to bloom, you'll have to really I don't even think you can ramp this up enough to get there, but dropping that threshold below one is really going to push uh, a lot of textures that probably shouldn't have bloom to have bloom. So you just got to be careful how you do that. But you know, you can ramp that intensity up. Uh, don't do it too much. It's going to be annoying. But otherwise, you start to see the effect there is uh, you start to get some some cool night, you know, night light effects. Um, we have all these like light posts here. What you'll probably want to do then on each of these is just add a, uh, what you want to add here is uh, a spotlight. And you want to drag this up, drag it over, kind of, lo you know, locate it right under the light, rotate this down 90 degrees. And then um, one thing you can do, uh, let's see if I can get this right there. Uh, and then you'll want to probably change the angle a little bit to be wider and maybe make the intensity a little bit brighter. And you could probably do that for cars, vehicles, things like that too. Um, but that's a good way to start out. Um, but again, the, cover, the kind of things that we wanted to cover was um, getting rid of the fog and changing the, the light source from the skybox. So again, that's under rendering, lighting settings. Um, you, we, since we changed the skybox to nothing, there is no uh, skybox. Um, but you can change the ambient color here to make that darker or brighter. And if you think you want to have some ambient lighting that always covers, just like a dark shade, um, some good colors might be like blue, bluish, greenish more. Some, you know, purple might work. Pink kind of makes it look more like a sunset, like a, you know, deep sunset, pink and purple. So you want to avoid that, but... Um, getting some blue in there kind of helps make it look like a cool, you know, more of a coolish, cool night um, instead of like a dusk color. So anyway, um, so those are a bunch of things that you can change to get the effects that you're looking for. Um, but that's how I would get started. If that helps you in any way, um, you know, go ahead and go from there. But if you're still looking for something a little bit different, kind of um, Leave some feedback. Say, hey, I'm not quite looking for that. Is there a way I can get some other effect uh, that I'd look for? Um, and I'll try and help you out there if I can. So that's all I've got for today, guys. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.